Are Lists Evil by Bjarne Strastrup, creator of C++, Magnify. From the, from the frequently asked questions, according to some corners of the web, I'm under the impression that vectors are always better than linked lists and that I don't know about other data structures such as trees and hash tables. Obviously, that's absurd. Yes, the creator of C++ probably knows a thing or two about these. Uh, the problem seems to be, inter- uh, be an interesting little exercise that John Bentley once proposed to me. Insert a sequence of random integers into a sorted sequence. By the way, the reason why I wanted to do this article is we actually watched this YouTube video where he explains this. And it's extremely interesting. Extremely interesting. Uh, then remove those elements one by one as determined by a random sequence of positions. Uh, do you use a vector, a contiguously allocated sequence of elements, or a linked list? For example, see software development infrastructure. Okay, we're not going to see that. I use this example to illustrate some points. Encourage thought about algorithms, data structures, and machine architectures, concluding don't store data unnecessarily, keep data compact, and access memory in a predictable manner. What was going on here is that it's actually really difficult to do this problem with a linked list. Now, that seems uh, unintuitive, right? It actually seems really unintuitive because you'd say, oh, you're removing random elements from within a list. Use a linked list. That seems obvious. But it actually might be better, and it is, and you really can kind of prove this out to actually walk the array to the position, remove that, and move over all of the other elements, I know, but you still have to remove. You have to move over all the remaining elements, right? So you still have the cost up to that element in both uh, in the linked list, but you have the other side being less expensive. Sounds uh, sounds like obviously bad to me. It's crazy that like if you haven't thought about these problems, it is rather crazy to think that it is faster to keep things more compact, right? Like if you're just not thinking about it which is totally okay, right? Most people just program in JavaScript, right? Where everything's on the heap. Uh, Where you just really have no no idea where stuff is stored. You don't even know, like, how is an object actually stored in memory? An object in an array, what does that look like, right? You just, you really don't have a good, like, conception of what that probably is. Underneath the hood, it's probably a contiguous piece of memory that has memory addresses that point off to containers that contain pointers to the object or some weird thing like that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't exactly know what goes on, but learn a little bit of C and you kind of have a better idea, right? Note the absence of list and vector in the conclusion. Please don't confuse an example with uh, with what the example is meant to illustrate. I use the example in several talks, most notably going native keynote. All right, this video has been popular. It has been downloaded more than 250,000 times plus another 50,000 times at various other sites. My impression is that many viewers fail to understand that the, uh, the purpose of that example is to illustrate some general principles and to make people think. Initially, most people say, list, of course. I have tried asking that question many times because of many insertions and deletions in the middle. Lists are good at that. The answer is completely and dramatically wrong, and it is good to know why. Again, this is a really hard concept, right? Like, because we've been taught our whole life that, 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 that like, that's why you use linked lists, right? But it's dramatically incorrect. I've been using this example for years. I had graduate students implement and measure dozens of variant uh, variants of this exercise and different exercises. Examples and measurements by others can be found on the web, of course. I have tried maps. They are much better than lists, but still slower than vectors. I have tried larger element sizes. Eventually, lists come into their own. Uh, I have used binary search and other uh, direct insertion for vectors. Yes, they speed up even further. I have checked my theory. I'm not even violating any big O complexity rules. It is just some of the operations can be dramatically more expensive for uh, one data structure compared to another. Absolutely. I have pre-allocated lists. That's uh, better than a standard list, but traversal still kills performance. I have used singly linked lists for lists that doesn't make much difference but makes it a bit harder to ensure that uh the user's code is 100 percent equivalent i know and say that 500,000 lists are not common but that doesn't matter for my main point we use many structures large and small where there is a choice between linked and contiguous representation i know for insertion push to front is faster for standard lists and push to back is faster for vectors you can construct examples to illustrate that but this example is not one of those Honestly, this is super, super good things to think about because I think what this goes to show is that often we simply kind of use these guiding principles, right? And let me show you something that I think will probably drive this point home really, really well. Uh, 
here we go. So what I have here is the following. I have some ways to control this data structure. I have a string that has a bunch of unique characters in it. And then I have an iterator effectively that creates a string that does not repeat until certain amount of characters have been added. Uh, that certain amount of characters, of course, is going to be 800,000. So at 800,000, it starts producing a string that has a longer amount of unique. Uh, in here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to check. We're going to see, can we, can we find X amount of unique characters in a row? So I've created a string that produces the worst case over and over and over again. And then at 800,000, we'll produce a string with that many unique characters, right? And so I just keep on going through and I do a little uh, check for, the, uh, for a set and I do a little check for an array. Same thing, right? And I, compare, I can compare them. So I'll run one of them 40 times and run the other one 40 times. If I jump in here and say, um, what the hell is this thing? Uh, let's just say that we start with 10. So we do a, a size 10. So we, we produce a string with nine unique characters up to 800,000 characters and then produce uh, a 10 unique character string at 800,000. Let's see how long it takes. For a set, it takes approximately a second for an array even though I'm doing index of checks, it's like half the time. And you can just do this over and over again and see the exact same thing. It doesn't really change, right? An array is faster at finding uh, elements within it than a set is when there's 10 elements within a list. Okay? So maybe that's kind of confusing to a lot of people. A lot of people probably wouldn't actually, um, wouldn't actually think that to be true. Right? We can move it up to 20. It's still the same thing. And your, you know, your computer will produce different results. Uh, you go up to 30, and now you start seeing like the real difference start happening. Right? Now you're starting to collide into something that makes sense. Now arrays are the same speed, maybe slightly, uh, maybe slightly slower. Right, we had one where it was slightly faster. We had one where it was slightly slower. We're getting different results all the time. Obviously, I'm not trying to be very precise here, right? I'm not trying to to, to do something good. This is just me doing a quick check, right? And it's clear that there is things underneath the hood that you may not realize. It's not JavaScript. That's not JavaScript. That's any language. Do that with any language, right? You can do this with any language ever. For a big enough one and a small enough uh, n, uh, O of one is slower than O of n. Greg, oh my goodness, we have the creator of Leptos here. I absolutely love seeing this. By the way, Leptos is probably the greatest templating system currently in Rust. I hands down agree with that. Uh, absolutely love it. Uh, Greg, I was actually uh, doing, I was working with Shuttle RS and uh, doing more things with uh, uh, HTMX and Leptos. I love it. Absolutely love it. But Big O of one can be slower than big O of N, right? Because remember, when I'm doing this, when I'm doing this check right here, I'm checking for that character every single time, right? So I'm doing a, a linear walk through the list looking for this character. Whereas I'm doing an O of one check by adding the character to the set and then rechecking the length, right? All O of 1 means is that performance is independent of input size. Correct. And this is a key point that a lot of people miss. O of 1 can still be slow. Because really, O of 1, o of one is an incorrect way to state it. Well, it's a correct way to state it, but it's, it's incorrect. It's O of C1, where C is some constant, right? It's some cost of the actual operation. We drop all constants in big O representation, but they actually have meaning. So you can think of something that is N squared versus uh, o, uh, o of 1 or O of N, and you forget that maybe in front of the N square, it's actually just a 3, but in front of the N, it's like a ten, it's like a 1,000. And so N squared is actually faster for some amount of time than N. It's just always good to think about. That's why the whole quick sort versus bubble sort thing, sometimes it's faster to bubble sort than it is to quick sort. Just something to think about. Even if bubble sort, yeah, look at that. Uh, it's faster than merge sort. Well, merge sort is just just slow. Merge sort is a very silly algorithm. Uh, don't use merge sort. Merge sort creates new memory. You quick sorts merge sort without the creation of new memory, effectively. That's how I think about it. Anyways, um, 
Hey, Greg, nice to see you. I always appreciate seeing you. Uh, I'm a, I, Greg, so for me, in the programming world, Greg is kind of like my hero, if you're wondering. When I look at people that I really look up to, Greg is one of those people. Um, all right. My point is not about lists and such. They have their uses, but this example isn't one of them. Please don't confuse me or co please don't confuse the example with what the example is used to illustrate. The example is about use of memory. We often create a data structure, do some computation on it requiring access, often traversal, then delete it. The order sequence is simply an example of such use and an example is presented to get people to think about what matters in such cases. My suggestion is don't store data unnecessarily. Necessarily. Keep that data compact. Access memory in a predictable manner. I emphasize the important uh, importance of cache effects. In my experience, all but true experts tend to forget those uh, those when algorithms are discussed. And yes, my recommendation is to use vector by default. I actually think this is a great, great piece of advice. Just default to using a vector, or this is called a dynamic array. Effectively, it's a contiguous memory space holding stuff. Always default to using that until you know you should be using something else, all right? More generally, use of contiguous representation unless there is a good reason not to, like C, C++ is designed uh, to do that by default. Also, please don't make any statements about performance without measurements. <laughs> Love it! Really, don't... You should just not ever think something's faster until you've measured it, right? Real talk. Even if you believe what you're creating will be faster, start by measuring first to know that you're fixing something that's slow, right? Uh, I've seen a case where changing a zero to two uh, element list to a zero to two element vector made a factor of two difference uh, to an algorithm. I didn't expect that, nor did other experts looking at the code. Yeah. Again. Beautiful. I absolutely love this article. This article was incredible. Um, I know it's old, but these are good things to return to, right? These are great things to return to, great things to really think about, great things to actually consider when programming, which is like, you don't have to be clever. You can use a set because they're easy to use, but if you're looking as a performance first thing, just consider using a vector, right? It's as simple as that. And then when you know that it's slow, do something else. Dick measure? Absolutely. I just read everything you say. Big O is about velocity, not about speed, isn't it? Uh, that's not that's not what a big O is. Big O is the, I mean, you could say that. I mean, if you're, I guess, yeah, in a sense, you're correct. Big O is about uh is not necessarily even about velocity because even in that example of big O, uh, big O n squared, that is not actually true because it's actually big O n squared some c of n uh, plus some uh, plus some d, right? It's actually it's it's more than that. It's about what dictates the growth of the algorithm. That's what big O is, and so yes, you can call that velocity. Fair, the first derivative, yeah. It's kind of like whatever is the biggest element in the first derivative, that's the one you keep. Fair. I'm solving every problem with the vector. Well, it just, it, I mean, there's complications with doing that as well, but it's just like a trade-off. You have to be, you have to understand that you're making. I think that's probably the better observation to make is understand the trade-off you're making. Don't just think something is better or worse. You know what I mean? It's not a great analogy, though. It's not a great analogy. Okay, just drop the whole acceleration versus velocity versus all that. Okay, the best way to put a big O of N, of course, is that the, it's, it's the amount of expected growth in the algorithm's runtime or space based on the size of the input. If your input doubles and you have an N squared algorithm, you can expect your runtime to quadruple or your memory to quadruple. And that's in rough sense. It's not perfect. The name is the primogen.